Bible is the mark of the beast. This is Harlan today. We'll be showing you the confusion that's in the church. And uh, it's real important that you understand that Jesus sent us the Holy Ghost and not a book. Now, I want to make a little note before we uh, tell you about bamboozle. In uh, Paris, France, they was, uh, t had an attack by terrorists. I want you to little Holy Ghost people to remember this. This is um, a religious war, a book war. This is the first one I recall in history. This is Koran worshipers against Bible worshipers. And there's not any difference in them. They're both controlled by books. But keep your eye on this one because this could be big. I think according to what it says about the old harlot, God has put it in their hearts to destroy this old harlot. So watch this. This could become big. And it could uh, take in a, a whole world because there's 1 billion, 600 million uh, Koran worshippers. There's 2 billion, 300 million Bible worshippers. Now this is a religious war. And they don't end suddenly. See, when Bush went over and attacked Iraq, he thought this thing would be over because they finished it. But you don't finish a religious war. They'll cut your head off because that's fighting for their God. Now watch this and keep your eye on it, and it could be big. And I think God has put it in their heart to destroy this old harlot. This could go on till the end of time. So watch and pray. Okay, now bamboozle. That means deceit or trickery. And I want to go over some things with you. I want you to think about these things as, as Punkin and I talk about them. And, and pay attention to what, what they've done in the world today with a book. All right. You would put that one first. <laughs> We're putting this one first. This is big. <laughs> women can preach. Women can't preach. Got it? Women can preach and women can't preach. Which is it? Well, I'll tell you what the Lord showed The men say <laughs> they can't. Keep silent in the church. And the women say, well, it depends on the Lord. <laughs> I was sitting behind the tent in North Carolina. And there's arguing about women preachers. And I asked Jesus, I said, how about that, Lord? He said, get all of it out of your mind that you think you know from the Bible and I'll teach you. He said, when the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost, did I give one Holy Ghost to the women and one to the men? I said, no, it's all the same Holy Ghost. He said, if a person stands up to speak and lets me speak in them, he said, no matter what vessel it's in, it's the Holy Ghost speaking in you. So they closed down half of the people that's got the Holy Ghost because they won't let the women speak in most churches. They so, quench the Holy Spirit. They don't, they're, they're fleshly. <laughs> they're controlled by the flesh instead of by the Spirit. Well, I'm telling you, this is bamboozle. It's confusion. Yeah. It's all confusion. And the truth is, whether it be a man or a woman, if they're not speaking by the Holy Ghost, both of them should sit down and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Here's one that they've argued over for years. All right, read it out loud, huh? Baptize in Jesus' name. No, baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hey, well, I remember arguing about that back in the 60s. You have to be baptized in Jesus' name because the Father and the Holy Ghost didn't die. Right. Jesus, well, you're buried with Jesus, baptism in his name, and you're raised to walk in newness of life. What you're telling God is when you're baptized, you said, I'm burying my body for you. I'm giving up my life in the flesh. I want to be part of the resurrection. I'm going to live after the Spirit. It's your funeral day. So you go down with him like in, in death, and you raise with him like in the resurrection. Jesus is the one that gave his life. And so that's why you're baptized in his name into his death. The Father did not die. The Holy Spirit did not die. That's why Jesus said, Father, why have you forsaken me when he was on the cross? God can't die. He left Jesus to die on the cross. And that's why Peter said in his uh, little epistles, he said, now that's why uh, baptism now saves us. Mm -hmm. So it's not the filth of putting away the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. See what you're telling God. I'm giving up the life in the flesh because this is where sin is mm -hmm. and I'm burying it. Now I'm going to be raised to walk with Jesus Christ in the resurrection. That's what baptism means. You're not going to live after the flesh anymore. You're going to live after the Holy Spirit. So, so don't be bamboozled. So be Father. baptized in the name of Jesus. Uh-oh. Seven-day Adventists. 
Go to church on Saturday. No, go to church on Sunday. All right, now which is it? Well, you're um, you're not supposed to go to church anyway. But uh, Constantine changed the Sabbath day from probably which was Saturday originally to the Sun God's day. He worshipped the Sun God to Sunday. But they're worshiping in the flesh. You don't worship God that way anymore. You worship God in the spirit always. And so we don't keep holy days. Mm -hmm. We don't keep months and new moons and circumcisions or any of the law. Every day is holy days. We're God's children. That's fleshly rituals under the law. That's bamboo. Okay, here comes the Baptist. Mm -hmm. The Baptist, once saved, always saved. And the Pentecostals say, endure until the end. You must endure until the end. <laughs> That's Bible confusion. That's being bamboozled. Neither one of them know what they're talking about. You see, when the Holy Ghost gets in you, you don't want to go nowhere else. And if we don't have the Holy Ghost, then it don't make no difference what doctrine you have. This is just a doctrine that teaches you that you've got to endure to the end to be saved. Well, that's the Pentecostals and the Baptists say that once you get saved, they can do anything. Baptists can. They can kill you and they're going to go to heaven anyway because once they get saved, y'all, this is bamboozle. They're, they're tricking you. They're making confusion in the body of Christ. And this is junk. It's like a junkyard. You can get anything out of a junkyard. Yeah, they're picking and choosing according to their will. So now here's a big Priests are forbidden to marry. And so what happens to them? They marry each other. <laughs> so they talk about same-sex marriage. They've had it for thousands of years. That right? energy has to go somewhere. And like one man commented the other day, he said, Peter was married. He wasn't the first pope. Right. Peter got married. So, so again, bamboozled. <laughs> they're bamboozled. And they didn't want the priests having families back in the old days. That way it didn't cost them that much money. Yeah, Just well, the families might have some right to the property and to yeah. the money and the houses and stuff, so they wanted it all for themselves. This okay. is good. They want all the money. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. They must pay your tithes. How many of these people on there are preaching for money 24-7 and they use the Bible? Oh, if you Why send in they... all this money, God's going to pour you out a blessing. Yeah. Why did they take up tithes? So they can be rich. Well, in Levi's day, they had a tribe called Levi, mm -hmm. and they took up tithes to support Levi. He didn't receive an inheritance in Israel, right. but that's the old covenant. See? That's right. And so you can't live under the old covenant. you got to rightly divide the word of God mm -hmm. from the old covenant to the new covenant. So Benny Hinn is bamboozling you guys. <laughs> All right. Now, this was a big one years ago. Years ago. This is where your Baptist church comes from. Uh, baptized babies, the Catholics baptize babies, and then the Baptists say you must be 12 years old to be baptized. You have to be at the age of accountability. Age of accountability, that's your uh, baptism. That's where the Baptists got their name from. They they wouldn't baptize babies, and the Catholics baptize babies. That's bamboozle. They got so much confusion, and y'all see how anybody can stand to go to church. They don't have the Holy Ghost. And neither one of these baptisms will save you. These are just ritual baptisms. Neither one of these people are giving up their life after the flesh to live after the Spirit. They think some form they have is going to save them. Well, that form of baptism will not save you. You have to give up your life after the flesh and then live after the Spirit. Okay, here we go. Okay, the Mormons have 12 apostles and the Catholics have only one Pope. Ain't that strange? You got to tell some churches say they're right. One of them's got one Pope. And the other one's got 12 apostles. Well, Mormons will come in your home and build their church on 12 apostles. And I say, well, Judas, he uh, betrayed the Lord. What happened then? They said, well, uh, they got uh, Matthias. They voted in Matthias. And then I said, well, how about Apostle Paul? That they makes, got 13. Makes 13. <laughs> so we're bamboozled again. So you're bamboozled with these churches. <laughs> All right, here's what we say. When did the New Testament begin, and when did the New Covenant begin? If you know when the New Covenant began, and when the New Testament began, you won't be bamboozled, because you can rightly divide the word between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. So the New Covenant is Holy Ghost people like us. So always remember, when the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost, 
we're led by the Spirit of the living God. That's all you need. If you read about it, sitting in your scriptures in 1 John 2 and 27, it said, the anointing that God gives us will teach us all things. And that's what we need, is the anointed, and you will not be bamboozled.